Hey everybody, it's uh, Chris over at Dixieland Farm and I'm doing a video on amateur radio. Uh, one of my other hobbies and this is going to have some geek stuff in it but I'm really going to try my best to kind of make it accessible for everybody. So amateur radio, uh, at least the amateur radio I do is HF, shortwave radio. Uh, that's the radio I'm interested in. So I send signals around the world and I have talked to 120 plus different countries. Sometimes they just think islands are countries, you know. It, Countries in amateur radio is uh, very specific. So, like Guernsey uh, is considered an island, even though it's part of the UK and it's just a little thing. Anyway, I've, I've talked all over Europe. I've talked to Japan, New Zealand, Australia, uh, parts of Africa, parts of the Middle East. You know, Europe is the easiest, actually. And I've got several different antennas to do that. Now, one of the antennas I'm going to take down and I'm going to put up a new antenna. Uh, I built most of my antennas except for one. Uh, the big daddy and I'll show you that in a second that's up on a tower it's got a rotor so I can actually uh, aim the antenna to Europe or to Africa or to uh, Alaska or other parts of the you know the world and things like that the one wire antenna I have here uh, that I put up I have no control where the signal goes it goes a lot of different places however it this antenna um, has a couple of disadvantages one it's uh, I meant it for multi-band use which means I can use different radio frequencies and those different bands are they have their own unique characteristics that's why shortwave is not completely reliable there's different parts of the day you've got to use different bands different parts of the year different parts of the sunspot cycle anyway this antenna it was like 30 bucks I think probably to build it however it's got a long piece of rope and it uses TV twin lead, which is um, normally not a problem. However, there is some concern with lightning uh, storms. When lightning storms come by, there can be enough voltage induced in that wire hanging up in the air that it can actually travel down that TV twin lead. And if you don't um, terminate it certain ways, I mean, you could actually introduce lightning into the house. Uh, you could do that with any uh, radio antenna, to be honest. Uh, however, coaxial uh, antennas, which the rest of them are, you can mitigate those, um, you know, that potential more. And so getting rid of a TV twin lead is going to be good, and getting rid of the rope that's up and into one of the pastures is good. Let me show you uh, the antennas. Here is my tower. Excuse the algae, the uh, stuff growing on the side building. Um, I have to power wash. That happens, you know, once a year. I've got to come and watch the siding. I put in that tower myself. I dug the hole myself. Uh, I bought the tower on Craigslist for like $150, I think. It goes up about 30 feet. I have climbed that tower. And if we zoom in, this thing right up there is a antenna that I purchased. It is directional. It uses a TV rotor to rotate that antenna. And I can use it on, let me see, one, two, three, four, five different bands. Uh, it's a really good antenna and it's actually a very compact antenna for the bands it uses this one underneath here that looks like an H I built that one myself that's for local uh, communication I uh, talk to Winston Salem with that and then the thing that looks like a grill with the little uh, bow ties is a bow tie antenna and that is actually meant for TV and that's what we received our TV signals on is that antenna right there now if we follow next to it, you can't see. Oh, now you're starting to see it. There we go. This antenna right here is one that I built, and that is the antenna I'll be getting rid of. So it goes in two different directions, and then it's got the twin lead that comes all the way down to the tower and then into my radio shack. And it's actually hung on that tree over there. It's about 250 feet of rope I've got, special parachute rope. And if we travel across the house, you can barely see it, but if we zoom in, there it is. So there is a bungee cord and a rope into this tree. So the plan is I'm going to take down that antenna. That rope that's up there is actually going to be a support for one single wire. I used to have an antenna that I built years ago and um, I, I just it broke during a storm. It was for uh, the hardest, longest band 
uh, called 160 meters. Uh, it's right above the AM band. It's really hard to get on that band. I, I just built it for, I don't know, five bucks, that antenna. And well, I should say more than really more than five, the, the time, because that antenna, the one that we just showed you was kind of like a T, right? So there's like the one side and the other side. Well, that antenna I had is like one wire up and then the, the other half of the T are wires in the ground. And there are literally 20 wires in the ground here that I ran out um, from the base of where that one antenna was. Uh, and that is the ground. And I had to use uh, staples, lawn staples. It took for years. Matter of fact, you can still see some of the wires uh, that have come up and down over the years. Here's one right here. You can actually see the wire right here in the dirt. It, it, it never actually pinned down the whole way, but I mean, there's literally wires all over the place. Just use the terrible ground. Here's one right here that, uh, yeah, there we go. So some of them have come up, some of them have come back down. Oh, let's go to where the antenna base is, right here next to the air conditioner. Two years ago, the wire snapped. So, all I need to do is put up a piece of wire. I just need to connect it to there. I'll use that existing rope up to the tree. 40 meters is my favorite uh, band. It's the only antenna that I need uh, in addition to the uh, directional antenna that I've already got up. It will cost me nothing. I've already got the wire. I need to put up 30 feet of wire up into that tree. Now, uh, 80 meters is a different band that that other antenna uh, could, be, could have been used on. I don't tend to go on 80 meters at all. So, I think I'm just going to skip it. I think I'm just going to have a 40 meter antenna. Um, the only other band I'll be missing is 30 meters and uh, 60 meters. 60 meters I won't use. Nobody uses it. And 30 meters I can actually tune the 40 meter antenna. So you'll ch see these uh, clothes change. I will explain to you what all the different bands are at a different point with my little uh, writing board so that way I can kind of go through why do I have so many different bands or antennas that I need and uh, yeah if I'm going too fast I'll write right below may I, I can help you out so well, we could do this right we can do, uh, well it's the next morning and uh, you can tell by the hair and it's eight o'clock in the morning already drenched in sweat Drinking a Diet Coke? Yeah. So what? It's the weekend. All right, so the antenna is down. It is right here. And uh, so you missed the thrilling part of me pulling it out of one tree, and now I'll be pulling it out of a second tree. And this one will take a little more manipulation because it's over some branches, and I don't want to scare horses, uh, especially because there's a clinic going on right now. So um, let's go cut the uh, twin lead. You can do that right now. So there's no way to make this look pretty. So the thing about TV twin lead and uh, communications is it can't touch the ground or anything metal. So you, you've got to suspend it in the air and also it can be resonant. So what that means is certain lengths will make the antenna, the twin lead be part of the antenna. So you've got to trial and error it a little bit and sometimes it's got to be a little longer, sometimes it's got to be a little shorter, the, uh, the transmission line, the twin lead. So that's why it's wrapped around on those stakes. And back here, you know, we just don't do landscaping. All our attention's out there, not in the, in the property. So I'll be very happy to actually get this out of here. So I'm going to clip it right now with the tin snips. That looks like I've already patched it at one point. So this is exactly where I'm going to snip, right above it. That way I can reuse it if I ever decide to put a twin lead again. There's no sense in getting rid of all that extra work that I've done. Ta-da! Okay, so what the problem is now is that the tree has got the wire threaded. 
So what the problem is, there's not enough slack to actually just let the wire drop. It's being held by the tree. So I tried climbing the roof and using a pole saw, uh, which was right here, and it was like six inches short. So I'm going to use my long stick that I've got here. It's like 20 feet, so I should be able to pull that down in a second. Um, yeah. All right, the wire's down. We got just broke now. All right, folks, we're getting to the nitty gritty here. So, uh, antenna is down. The rope is ready because I'm reusing the same rope. And so now we're making the quarter wave vertical. So I used to have a 160 meter inverted L. So what that is is the same thing. It's it's quarter wave vertical, but what you do is you, you do as much as you can going up and then you have a pulley and then you go straight across making an L. Uh, that's a compromised antenna, but you know, you've got to compromise when you've got a long antenna. And that one was long, it was like 120 feet. This is only 33 feet, so it's going to go straight up. But I'm going to reuse the same wire, because there's one thing that all hams are, and that's cheap. Uh, all cheap, we reuse stuff all the time, and uh, use the worst stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, this is just, I think, 18 gauge wire, which is enough for the power that I put out, and it's, you know, it's just straight wire, it's nothing fancy. Um, so, we're going to measure out 33 feet and clip it. Now, it's actually, that's going to be a little too long. Uh, because it's insulated wire, you can actually get away with a little shorter wire. So probably 31 feet is what I need. But what I'm going to do is cut it to length and then shorten it, um, tune it. Because you have to tune the antenna no matter where you are. Um, and so we'll be doing that by trial and error. So, measuring out 33 feet. And here's the wire and here's the tape measure. Okay, so I've cut out the bungee cord and here I have attached the wire to the rope. You may be asking why don't I just use the bungee cord? Well, the reason is that as you pull it up over the tree limbs, you don't want anything to snag at all. So we're actually going to tape this nice and smooth. So that way as we pull it over a tree limb, um, it won't snag on anything. Marissa bought me this expensive, wider electrical tape, and it's super sticky, which is perfect. It almost fuses together as one big blob of plastic. So now it's just pull the uh, pull the string. All right, so here's where the antenna P point matches up. So I'm going to just strip the wires real quick and hook it up. So the moment of truth. Does it tune up? No, not at all. But that is to be expected. We need to tune the antenna. Uh, remember, we left it long, so I'm going to take about a foot off. So you can see by the meters, um, the forward meter you want high, the reflected meter you want low. So way more reflected than going out. Not a good thing. Let's trim some off. You can see all the power goes up, very little reflected. I am happy with that. It looks like we have a uh, perfect match right around the um, amateur slow CW, the Morse code section of the band. That's perfect. And I've got an antenna tuner here, so I can uh, tune the antenna, make it electrically longer or shorter. So I think. Yeah, I'm keeping it right there. Perfect. So let's do an on-air check. Let's see if we can contact anybody. CQ, CQ, CQ. CQ, CQ, CQ. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is Kilo Bravo for Mike Bravo. Kilo Bravo for Mike Bravo calling CQ and listening. Whiskey Baker 5 and I missed the, uh, the end. That god-awful noise in the background is computer mode, so you can actually use computers over the radio. Um, and so I'm going to just check and see how the computer does on the air with the antenna. Using the, uh, the paddles over here.
All right, so all I've done is I've just sent a question mark and then my call sign uh, just to make sure that the frequency was clear. I really don't have any intention of talking to anybody. I just wanted to see how the antenna was going to do. I've heard signals on the air. Um, what's not working for me right now is that it is daylight. So this band is uh, local right now. It's a lot of noise. It's summer. Uh, this is more of a winter band. The fact that it worked with John at all into Georgia, uh, the guy that I talked to, WB5EUC, uh, just proves that the antenna does work. How well it's going to work, I don't know. What was what we learned? Chris built an antenna with wire, with used wire. It didn't cost him anything. <laughs> and that's it. And you came along. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm certainly here to, uh, you know, talk to if you want to comment below, you have questions, or if you're interested in ham radio, let me know. So uh, that's it. Take care.